When the American people elected President Obama, the country was promised change. Yet there is very little difference between President Obama and President Bush. Take a listen. Then Senator Obama and practically every single Democrat relentlessly criticized President Bush and his administration for engaging in an illegal war in Iraq. Now fast forward to today and ask yourself, how has the U.S. foreign policy changed? The truth is, it hasn't. We are still entrenched in Iraq. We are fighting two other non-declared wars in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. There is a frightening level, level of saber-rattling between this administration, the Obama administration, and the government of Iran. They are actively pursuing al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and in Yemen. And President Obama, of all things, has extended the Patriot Act, allowing the U.S. government to continue to spy on us and allowing its agents to write their own search warrants and direct violation of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. There has been no change. Joining me now is Angela Keaton, producer of Anti-War Radio at Antiwar.com. Angela, welcome to Freedom Watch. Oh, thank you, Judge. All right, so I mean, we, we know these arguments. When, when he was in the Senate, President Obama railed against uh, fighting a war that wasn't lawfully declared, railed against the NSA spying on innocent uh, American people, rail, railed against self-written search warrants uh, by federal agents. He gets to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, suddenly the world looks different, and he continues all these policies. What the heck is going on? Well, to be fair, and uh, be it far for me to ever defend Barack Obama on anything, he was very, very clear that he was going to expand the war into Pakistan. He did not hide that from the people. He said he wanted to increase the war. The one thing he did say about Iraq was that he was going to draw down the troops, and ever so slowly and with missed deadlines, we're seeing today a slight drop of the troops in Iraq. Um, if anything, I would actually dare say that Barack Obama's foreign policy is slightly worse than George Bush's, which I didn't think was possible. Well, uh, Barack Obama has unleashed the power of 57 drones to kill human beings in Pakistan. Now, A, we haven't declared war on, on Pakistan. B, how do they know they're killing the right person? C, this is a violation of the law of war. D, it's a violation of Pakistan's territorial uh, sovereignty. This is something the government doesn't even talk about. 57 drones in 12 months, that's more than George Bush dispatched in eight years. That's, that's correct, Judge. And let's take it a little further. The people of Pakistan were actually quite friendly to the U.S. before the drones uh, started flying over. I mean, the people must be confused and confounded, and all we're doing is increasing radicalism against people who initially had no grievance with us. And a drone, I mean, if you know what a drone predator is, um, you'd mentioned that, that Obama had actually deployed more than Bush. In the first quarter of 2009, over 900 civilians were murdered by drone predators. Wow. And what they are, it's basically, as someone put it, you know, some dweeb in Nevada, you know, does a little video game and he's, I mean, robots from the sky are killing innocent men, women, and children. Could, could you imagine uh, if we had a real serious problem, let's just say the Texas, New Mexico, Mexico border, and we had drug gangs that were controlling the border and we couldn't control those drug gangs, and the Chinese government? sent unmanned drones into New Mexico and Texas to assassinate the drug leaders for us? Would, would we put up with that for five minutes, and yet we expect the Pakistani people, a thousand of whose innocents have been killed by these drones, to tolerate it in the name of fighting terrorism? Of course not. I mean, it's, it's first, I mean, I just want to... To back this all up to the whole question of, you know, Amer the, U the, the moral question, you know, the U.S. has always prided itself on its religi overt religiosity, its spirituality. Right. And yet what we're doing is occupying the Middle East and we're killing civilians every day. These are people with, I mean, the countries that we're actually at war with are not are not the countries from which, you know, the 9-11 terrorists are from. That's a different, that's a separate issue and a separate problem that we've also created for ourselves. So the pragmatic question would be, how does any of this make us any more safer? And it has not. Oh, I don't think it Whether makes it us Clinton safer at all. Using, I, I think, it, I think um, it, it wins us a lot more enemies, Angela, don't you? Like the, the families and friends and colleagues and government officials of those innocents who've been killed. Robert Pape, Dr. Paul, so many people have come on, to, I, I know, and discussed this with you as well, that this is creating blowback 
um, right. you know, which is a term where what happens, you know, colonialism, occupation creates terrorism. This is a common theme throughout history. It's not because Islam t directed them to kill Americans several centuries later. What, it, what it's doing, it's creating resentment from people who don't wish to be occupied by a foreign government and don't wish to be slaughtered day in and you day out. You remember that moment during the Republican debate when former New York City Mayor uh, Rudy Giuliani attacked Ron Paul when Ron Paul said, they don't hate us because of our prosperity and our success. They hate us because we're occupying their lands. And Giuliani interrupted and demanded a, an apology. And Congressman Paul, of course, said, I'm not going to apologize for this. And by the way, Mr. Mayor, you obviously didn't read the report that you were a part of the team that wrote. It is the 9-11 uh, Study Commission report headed by Governor Kane and Congressman Hamilton that told the government the reason all this happened is because we're occupying lands where we're not wanted and where we don't do any good. Rudolph Giuliani came across as such a crass, vulgar thuggish human being that day. And I watched, I used to watch that clip over and over again. What Dr. Paul said was so courageous, so brave, and so morally true. We are chatting I mean, with... after all... Go, no, go ahead, go ahead, Angela. I just wanted to reintroduce oh, you. We're chatting with Angela the, Keaton, who's oh. the producer uh, of Anti-War Radio at Antiwar.com. Um, what, what really is driving me up the wall is the, the government wanting to use the tools of war without declaring war. And then I thought to myself, you know, if the government actually declared war on a country or a group, and then that country or that group surrendered, the war would be over. But by the use of an authorization to use military force, which is what President Bush got from the Congress and handed to President Obama, this is as open-ended as can be. He can, if he follows the letter of this authorization, attack any group in any country anywhere on the planet if he can make an argument that he's doing so in order to fight terrorism. To an extent, the government gave America, the Congress gave American presidents more power than it would have if it had declared war in the traditional sense. Well, I mean, it, it is, I mean, we do call it an imperial presidency for a reason. We do discuss, you know, Dr. Paul talks about the U.S. as an empire for a reason, and that's in part of it. I mean, what that authorization didn't make it more legal. It basically is a free-for-all that's creating chaos and lawlessness in this country. Well, we don't, we're not respecting the rule of law. No, we don't respect the rule of law. I, I, I marvel at some of my colleagues who want to prosecute people uh, because they commit acts of war outside of uniform. Question. How many Americans are committing acts of war outside of uniform in countries against which we haven't even declared war? I, I couldn't even think of what that number is, but it's well into the five or six figures. Well, and part of the, I mean, part of the issue is, too, is like, you know, we, and you talk about this often on your show, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights is, a, is an inspirational and serious document about how we see our, you know, how the U.S. should be governed and how we see our, our role in the world. And we have a criminal system to deal with these things. Not everything needs to be in a military tribunal. In fact, that goes against the spirit and, in many cases, the letter of what our current law is. Yeah, the, last time the, our, the last time the Supreme Court authorized the military tribunal, it only did so because we had declared war against the nation that sent those people here, and it was Nazi saboteurs. And the president, as an ex-professor of constitutional law, ought to know that. Angela Keaton, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. You can catch today's show on foxnews.com slash Freedom Watch and on Sirius 145 XM 168 or online at foxnewstalk.com at 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. From New York, defending freedom. Until the next time, stay free, America.